Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you guys are doing well today. We're going to be talking about uh, Gigi Le Coultre and their releases for Watches and Wonders this year, and also just some watches that they released, um, not at Watches and Wonders, but not for Watches and Wonders, but during this time as well. They had some amazing uh, releases, as they always do with a lot of their pieces, and so I'm going to be talking about them. The two main ones are going to be uh, from the Reverso line, so it's going to be about the tradition of the Reverso line and as well as some complications And so what we're going to be doing is talking through each of these watches Giving you my thoughts and making sure we put up a lot of pictures and, and videos about these with these two watches So you can see them while we talk through them I'll say at the beginning of this video as I have said with each one of my watches and wonders videos I do not have any of these watches in my possession So if you are looking for a video where they have a hands-on experience with these watches um, that is not me, uh, that is not this video, um, but uh, but I will uh, be sure to put up a lot of images and, and videos so you can see these watches while I give you my thoughts on them, walk you through the specs and give you my opinions. Um, so diving straight in, we're going to start with um, the, the behemoth when it comes to complications and that is the new uh, Gigi Le Coultre uh, Reverso. Uh, this is part of the... Uh, uh, the uh, Hebris Mechani Mechanica uh, line of watches this is basically a big uh, line of watches that Yigi de Coultre has, has come out with where they um, where they focus on complications and making extremely difficult complications into, the, into their watches. And this is the uh, Hebris Mechanica Caliber 185. This is um, one of Yigi de Coultre's most complicated reversals that they've ever produced. And when you take a look at this watch, you can really understand why. Um, there's a lot going on with res this Reverso, um, and so I'm going to walk through each of the, the complications and kind of where they're located. Um, so, as you know, the Reverso is a, rever is a watch that, where you can actually flip the dial, um, so, you can, so you have um, both the, the kind of two faces with the, with the watch. So on one of the faces, there's an instantaneous perpetual calendar, which has a uh, big date. Um, and indications for the day, month, year, and leap year, and obviously a day-night indicator to go along with that perpetual calendar. And then what you also have kind of towards, um, towards where seven o'clock is, is you have a flying tourbillon um, that uh, can, kind of sits off, off to the side of, of one of the dials. When you flip the reverso over and you're on the back of the watch, typically is where the case back is and historically is how you protect the dial of your watch. The reverso was produced so that you could flip the watch. The dial can be protected when people were playing polo, but on the second face of the watch, um, there is a digital jumping hours complication. Um, there are also components as you can see for the uh, minute repeater, and um, there's uh, quite a unique uh, feature with this where it's actually on demand. Um, you can actually ring the hours, the quarter hours, minutes um, by pressing a, a button on the side of the case. Um, and this has been used in some other watches from Yigel Coultre, but that's going to be the complications on that side. And then you have two other kind of dials if you want to talk about it that way, and that it's actually in the construction of the reversible case. So there's obviously a piece that sits flat on your wrist, and that's kind of, and then there's the, the case of the watch which actually moves. It's kind of like the cradle of the watch. And so the two other dials are actually located on the two sides of this watch. So if you can imagine, um, there's actually complications on the underside where your wrist actually sits. Um, the third dial, and that's this is going to be the, the, the side of the, 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 the kind of cradle of the watch that's, that faces up to you. This, um, this dial has uh, three different aspects of the moon's orbit. It has um, cycles for the, um, for, for the uh, Synodic cycle, the draconic cycle, and the anomalistic cycle. Now, I'm not going to go into each of these and kind of give you a, a, an idea of what these are. It's kind of difficult to do it in words. So what I'm going to do is you can check out our blog, our article where we talk about the Watch and Wonders releases from Yigle Coultre if you are interested in getting some more information about what these are, what these actually are. But needless to say, they're incredibly beautiful and incredibly finished. Um, in order to create such a one, to create such a small masterpiece on, onto this dial is incredible. And the details that you have on each one of these moon, these um, these uh, moon uh, kind of complications is, is extremely, extremely difficult, um, difficult to do. Um, and then moving on to the fourth side, and this is where you actually turn the watch uh, around. This has um, the moon phase, 
um, and um, that's that's basically it. And then it obviously has this really incredible, um, incredible kind of finishing on on it, um, where you have this kind of night sky um, kind of pictured on it. The moon phase is also quite interesting because it's actually almost like a window, and you can you can the moon phase kind of moves uh, along with it. It's it's an incredible piece. Um, so after, after finishing all, going through all the complications, I can kind of now give you my my thoughts on this watch. This is a complicated piece, and obviously they're not going to be creating this for the mass market. This is an extremely expensive piece, and it's only limited to about 10 pieces. Um, they're retailing for 1.35 million euros, um, and obviously, well, you know, th that's an extremely expensive piece for anyone. Um, and for to have 10 pieces of these is quite quite difficult. But when you think about it, mechanically speaking, it's a very difficult piece to manufacture. And so uh, obviously they're only gonna produce 10 pieces. Obviously it's gonna be relatively expensive. Um, my general thoughts about this watch, um, it's, I think this is a watch that isn't really for kind of mainstream collectors or anything like that. This is for people who are really, really close to man manufacture or really, really close to really high complications. And it's for people, for um, enthusiasts who are kind of in a different kind of bracket when it comes to uh, collecting. It's a cool piece nonetheless. I think it's I think it's cool that they've kind of made it very, very complicated. I guess if you are looking at it from a person from from a you know more like perhaps mainstream collecting perspective um this is probably too complicated for for some pieces but I, it just isn't it isn't really for mainstream collectors so it's really not something that one should have an opinion on um obviously the movement's incredibly finished it has to be incredibly finished throughout the entire movement because you have all these complications that you're able to see and what are you going to get when you get when you think about uh, Le Coultre, and then of course you're going to have incredibly finished watches. So that was one of the watches they released that Watch Some Wonders obviously is an incredible, um, incred incredible uh, watchmaking feat. So congratulations, JLC. The other watch, which is a little bit more um, in tune with m perhaps mainstream um, collecting, and that is the uh, Le Coultre Reverso Tribute Small Seconds with you guessed it a green dial so if you don't know the trip the tribute uh reverso tribute kind of harkens back to the original reverso and takes a lot of the design elements and creates a modern watch with those similar design elements and most people have held it as one of the best reversos ever released um, this watch obviously uses that similar design and has a sub seconds dial at six o'clock and has an hours and minutes hand so a fairly simple um, watch from a complications perspective if you're kind of looking at it in, in comparison to the Caliber 185 that we just looked at. Obviously green has been a really, really uh, crazy uh, color. People have really fallen in love with it. And so this watch has a really beautiful sunburst green dial and it comes on a green leather strap. Um, f you know, what do I think about this watch? I think the fact that they use the tribute uh, design is um, probably the best way that they could have go gone about this. I think it's really important um, that uh, they use things that are, collectors are really gonna, gonna like, gonna enjoy. And so I think from a design perspective, I really like that. The watch runs on the Caliber 822 uh, JLC um, movement. So you're getting a really um, high end, uh, when it comes to construction finishing movement at a relatively um, affordable price, um, relatively speaking, like I said. Um, but a really, really great, great watch in itself. The watch is 8,750 US dollars and it's not um, a limited edition or anything like that. It's gonna be in regular production. So this is another element to the Reverso lineup that if you are interested in, in Reversos or you are looking for Reversos, it gives you another thing that you can maybe uh, take a look at and add to your collection. The green dial is obviously the big, the big thing here. And I don't know if watch these watch companies maybe like spoke to one another and said, let's all do green this year. I don't really know how it was so unanimous that they all did green. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I have no idea. Um, but it is interesting that everyone decided to do a, a green dial here. Um, regardless, I think it's gonna sell really, really nicely. I think when you have colors like the green or with uh, or blue, they're gonna sell nicely. And so I'm sure JLC is gonna do very well with these watches. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed talking about the JLC reversal watches that they released during Watches and Wonders and during this kind of 2021 release year. I don't think this green dial one was part of that, but a really phenomenal watch in itself. Um, let me know in the comment section below what you think about JLC's uh, 
releases, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you have not seen some of our other videos where we go over all the other watch companies who have released watches during this time and during Watches and Wonders, we have a playlist, it's called Watches and Wonders 2021, so be sure to check that out. Um, also, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like these types of videos and share them with your friends so that they can enjoy uh, this kind of watch community that we've created. Also, I say it every video, but if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button for us, it really does help us out and get these videos to more watch collectors or watch enthusiasts who would be interested in seeing these videos. And with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time.